Okay, hi, it's, uh, it's Dom here from Esports News UK and today I'm delighted to be joined by Sam Matthews, uh, owner of and founder of Fnatic. Thanks for joining us, Sam. Thank you, thanks for having me. <laughs> um, so today we're here at the launch of uh, some new Fnatic gear products. Maybe you could start by telling us a little bit about those. Definitely, we're launching three new products actually today. Uh, super excited, been in the works for about a year. Um, Fnatic gear was actually an idea that we had a couple of years ago that we really want to take a lot more control over what our players use and also just feel like you know, this is something that is worthy of esports. And so, you know, this iteration is kind of getting closer and closer to where we want to be as, as a brand. You know, we acquired a hardware company last year to be able to deliver great products. Um, and so we're launching three products. Uh, the first is the Clutch which is the second mouse that we're produce, producing. And it's it's basically like a larger form factor, but it's got the best sensor you can get. It's got amazing switches, um, and it's really a, you know, something that we're super proud of. It's no, no like flashy lights that's unnecessary. It's just no bullshit, basically. It's just what you need to perform. The most exciting thing uh, that we're launching today, I don't know if I can be favoritist when it comes to my own products, but... Uh, but is actually the Dual. We're launching our first headphones, um, and it's the first, I'm saying that word a lot, but uh, dual purpose gaming and lifestyle headset. So the idea behind it is that you can go to the gym, go home, switch up a couple of things, and it's ready to play games. Um, you can go outside and go catch your bus, go to work, and come back and it's ready to play games. And it's like, it's, it's, it's really fun to have this lifestyle product, which is it's actually looks cool, you know? Brilliant. Well, good luck with the products. Um, just a quick couple of questions. It'd be really great to hear. Uh, I've read the book recently, but yeah. how you got started and, you know, you sold your car <laughs> and things like that. What, what advice yeah. would you give to, I mean, there's a lot of guys in, and, and girls in the UK that uh, have sort of smaller esports organisations struggling to get to the next level, maybe obviously because there's more of them now. What advice would you give to those guys to go beyond those sort of small amateur grassroots tournaments and maybe reach that next level, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that there's, it's, it's all about being professional these days and, and not promising the world, delivering on your promises. Um, you know, one of the things that we've always pr been you know, proud, proud ourselves on, <laughs> if that's the correct way of saying it, is actually, you know, being true to our players, not over-promising, delivering against our expectations, um, and then hustling. You've got to hustle to get the sponsors these days. Um, realistically, to enter the sort of big leagues of, of, of top-tier teams, it's about signing some great talent and, and, and almost becoming a management group for them, you know? So for us, um, uh, I, it's it's been a it's been a long road to get where we are, and it's been a lot of challenges, and it's still a very competitive landscape with a lot of new money coming in that we have to compete against. Um, but I, I I think that joining esports now, you're riding a wave, and it's it's going to get better, and it's going to get bigger. I was going to ask that actually, what your thoughts are on the change in esports landscape? There's been a lot of uh, sporting clubs get into esports recently and we've had some predictions uh, Red Eye predicted a few days ago that in sort of uh, five years time um, or ten years time there's going to be a lot of s more sports clubs in esports than there are traditional uh, organisations like yourselves you know how do you see the landscape of esports changing in the next five to ten years? I mean it's very malle malleable uh, it's going to be very uh, different and, and we can't necessarily predict exactly how it's going to be I definitely think the authentic esports brands will still be here, whether it's whether they've merged with sports teams or whether they're still independent. I still think you know that really comes down to the founding team and the management behind them. Uh, I think a good example of, of of a company which has brought in some great expertise and done an interesting structure was was that of Peter Gruber and Team Liquid. With, with, that was. Uh, you know, they've obviously got a lot of sport experience, very well-respected sports uh, people, and then at the same time, a group of esports entrepreneurs that, that kind of know what they're doing. I, I think I, I, the European mentality of, of, of teams taking control of, of, of their own esports um, brands, I, I'm, I'm not sure about. I think that uh, there needs to be a level of entrepreneurship by the upper, the, you know, top down um, people that manage these teams and, and ultimately when you bring in I guess a gun for hire to manage your esports team it's not always going to result in success compared to 
the other teams such as Fnatic where we have a lot of part owners in the company and they're really they're really bought into what we're doing as a business cool and um, yeah do you have uh, I mean how challenging has it been with the, to cope with that changing landscape and we've seen that Tim Dignitas were bought by 76ers is that something you'd ever consider I mean at this stage I'm pretty happy with our trajectory uh, I think that I'm, I like the fact that we know esports inside and out. We've been here since day one. Um, you know, we, we've helped form it, form it and formulate how it should be and put our efforts into making sure that it was well structured and, 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 and doing our bit to, to grow it. Um, I don't see us jumping out anytime soon. Um, you know, if we were to ever consider something like that, it would. I, I don't even know what it would look like, to be honest. Like right now, it's for us, it's, it's just about this opportunity to, to take our message and our, our mission as a business to the whole world. Um, you know, we think this is a new world sport. This is like football level scale. You know, obviously, we're in multiple games. It's, it's so exciting to not have and be bound by rules of traditional sport. You know, right now, we can kind of launch academies in different regions like Sweden or India or South America. And it's, it's just like... It's just it's fun as an entrepreneur and as, and as a group of creative people who want to who want to create cool new stuff. Cool, oh, cool. And um, yeah, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I mean, this is th thanks for the time. Thanks for having. Thank me. you. Thanks very much. No Cheers, Sam. Thank you. <laughs> no worries at all.